Gingrich would not yield to Clinton's charms. Unless the president agreed to huge cuts in Medicare and Medicaid, Congress would refuse to appropriate money for the federal government, shutting it down. The one thing that the House of Representatives has is the power of the press. We can deny money. It, it is the only thing that the House of Representatives alone can do. They can refuse to vote an appropriation. So inevitably, whatever the fight was going to be, it was going to come down to us denying the, the, the White House money. Clinton seemed caught between two toxic political choices. If he opposed Gingrich's balanced budget plan, he would be portrayed as a defender of big government deficits. If he gave in, he would effectively cede control of the government to Gingrich and the Republicans. But there was a third option. Dick Morris had been polling the Republicans' proposed budget cuts and believed he had found an opening. I did a poll for Clinton where I tested each of those cuts and its impact. And I said to him, do you want the four-hour briefing or the one-word briefing? And he said, start with the one word. I said, Medicare. I said, you, none of the other cuts are nearly as important as the cut they're proposing in Medicare. The public supported a balanced budget, Morris argued, but not at the expense of their most cherished federal program. I said that what's important is that you take away from the Republicans the balanced budget issue. If you can show how you can balance the budget without cutting Medicare, but by cutting everything else, then you can call their bluff. And then all of a sudden, it becomes a question of what do we cut, not do we cut. Morris called his strategy triangulation. Clinton seized on it as a way to regain the initiative from the Republicans. In June, over the strong objections of liberals on his staff, he announced his own balanced budget plan, protecting Medicare and Medicaid. There is an alternative a way to balance this budget. It's not that we shouldn't balance the budget. We should balance the budget. I strongly support it. We ought to do that. I believe we're going to do that. But we don't have to do it in a draconian way that hurts the American people. You know, whether or not to balance the budget, we can't win that fight. We're going to lose. Once you accept that we're going to balance the budget, now let's have a fight about what we're going to cut and what we're going to protect. That's a fight we can win. <laughs> 